Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Brittany from ByBrittanyGoldwin.com, a blog about DIY home and garden. And I was not going to shoot a houseplant care video today, but I woke up this morning and my Monstera Deliciosa was looking so beautiful in the morning light coming in the sunroom that I just decided, you know what? I have to do a video on this one today. So today for this plant care video, I'm going to be talking all about this big beauty right here. This is the Monstera Deliciosa which is probably, I'd say, the most common type of plant in the Monstera genus that you will find as a houseplant. So I'm going to go over um, where to find this plant, how to care for this plant, including light, water, soil, temperature, and humidity, and I'll also talk a little bit about how to propagate this type of Monstera from cuttings. So let's jump right in and start with light. So as a tropical plant, the Monstera Deliciosa does prefer bright and direct light. That said, I have found it to be very, very flexible with lighting requirements. Right now, I obviously have it in a very sunny sunroom. This is the first video I'm doing in my new sunroom. Um, so it's the first peek at all my plants in their new home. So you can see it's getting a lot of light here. However, that has not always been the case for this plant. I have had this plant in a basement with very little light. I have had this plant in an office that had one small window for the last eight months, really, until I moved it into this room. Um, and although it does slow down the growth and lead to a smaller leaf size sometimes, um, I have found it to be generally pretty flexible and still able to put out healthy growth. Um, lighting conditions like the ones I have it in now are best. The window behind me right here gets morning sun, so the sun comes up and goes over. So it pretty much gets sun all throughout the day. Um, bright indirect light all throughout the day, some direct morning sun, and that's perfectly fine for the leaves. It doesn't burn them or anything. So you can see that the leaves on my plant are quite large. They have loads of fenestrations in them. Those are the splits going down each of the leaves, and then they have the holes um, down the middle of the leaf as well. In the juvenile form of this plant, all of the leaves will be solid, whether you give it adequate light or not. It's just how it looks in its juvenile form. As the plant starts to mature, it will begin to develop these fenestrations, and then eventually it will start to develop the holes down the middle of the leaf here. If you find that your plant is reverting to spitting out leaves with fewer fenestrations in them or completely solid leaves, that's usually a sign that you're not giving the plant enough light. You should move it to a plant that has better light and it will likely begin to give you more mature looking larger leaves with these lovely fenestrations on them. As far as water and soil go, I have found that this is pretty easy as well. I mean, I think it's generally a very easy plant. Most people, I would say, overwater this plant or put it in soil that's too dense. I like to plant it in a very chunky soil meant for tropical plants. So anything that's labeled like indoor houseplant soil or um, container gardening, something like that for indoor use is typically going to be a good choice for this plant. I have added in a little bit of extra chunky perlite and some bark into this mix just to give it a little bit more drainage because I have had some overwatering issues in the past with a soil that was too dense. With this well-draining soil, um, I can be sure that when I water the plant, all of the extra water will not sit in the roots and it will flow all the way out of the drainage holes and um, not lead to any sort of root rot issues with soil that's overly dense and wet. I do like to wait quite a while before I water the plant again. I know a lot of people say like, let the top one to two inches dry out before watering it again, but I've actually found that this is too much water for my plants. So I try to let the soil dry out until I can stick my finger down maybe like this far and it's com still completely dry on my finger. Um, it's time to water it again. This usually means about every week in the summer and late spring and early fall, and then in the winter, maybe every 10 to 14 days. This really just depends on the type of soil you have it in and the type of growing conditions that the plant is in. Um, it might be different for you and your environment. 
As far as temperature and humidity go for this one, it is good with a wide range of normal household temperatures and humidity levels. It does definitely appreciate higher humidity levels as a tropical plant. I had this one outside on a covered patio that just got great shade and a little bit of indirect light um, all day during the summer last year. And it grew beautifully in the outdoor humidity and very warm temperatures. I just had to make sure I watered it a little bit more often. If you do notice that the leaves have this one over here, if you can see it, and I'll put a close up shot as well. Um, some of the corners turning a little bit of a crispy brown. This is a somewhat older leaf, um, but it's still a lovely leaf, so I've kept it on. That may be a sign that the plant isn't getting enough humidity, um, in which case you could try misting the plant, which is a very temporary increase in, humidi in humidity. Um, the best choice is really to group it around other plants, like I've done here, and to add something like a humidifier. All right, now that I've covered the care basics on this plant, I want to talk about some of my personal experience caring for this plant. So when I first got this plant, it was, I'll throw up the oldest picture I have of it here, and that's not even when I first got it. Um, it was a clearance shelf plant at like a Lowe's or Home Depot, one of those places. I mean, it had bird poop on it. The leaves were all torn up. It was not cute. Only a couple of the leaves had any sort of fenestration. So it was a pretty young plant. Um, the first thing I did was I took it and I washed off all the leaves. I repotted it and then I trimmed off all of the older ugly growth. So I wanna talk a little bit about pruning this plant. As you can see, all of the leaves on my plant are very mature. And that has been an intentional move on my part. I have pruned off all of the older growth as this plant has gotten larger. Every year when I've repotted this plant, I have pruned off down here on the stems the older growth that either is not as mature or just isn't looking that cute um, so that I can have the focus be on all of the huge mature leaves. I've also found that this really helps the plant to focus its energy on producing new growth instead of, you know, maintaining all of the older, smaller growth. And honestly, I just think it gives it a more striking look when you have it climbing up a pole like this and the focus is exclusively on these huge leaves. So I know a lot of people are afraid to cut their plants, but I am a major fan of pruning plants to help control their size and their shape and to help them focus their growth efforts. So I mentioned a moss pole. I did not have this plant on a moss pole until maybe two years ago. And this is probably like a five-ish year old plant. Um, I found that I, I might not even need a moss pole at this point, but the plant was getting so wide that it was taking up way too much space, way too much area on the floor. So I actually didn't add a moss pole, I added a jute pole. And I used a piece of PVC pipe and jute rope to just wrap it around the rope. And I'll throw up a couple pictures of that process too. Um, and I have a tutorial post on my blog. I just found this was easier because the PVC pipe was super stable and it's not prone to rot like some of the wood bases on moss poles are. And plus I just didn't feel like making a moss pole and I had the jute rope, so it's worked out really well. Um, I'll also show some close-up shots of how I have the plant attached to the pole here. Basically, I just use a stretchy vinyl plant tape and then some other little like plant wiring, wiring and Velcro thingies just to strategically hold up the plant. And then every couple months after a couple of new leaves have come out, I'll go in and I might mess around with it just to control its shape and where the leaves are pointing and all of that. Um, so this also helps train the plant more up rather than spreading out. And it just makes it, I think, look super full and not really super leggy at all. Like some monsteras can look when they're not given anything to climb on. So for this plant, it is a pretty prolific grower. Um, I've had it in pretty ideal care conditions and growing conditions since I've had the plant. So I have had to repot this one every spring since I've had it. Um, when I repot it, I use fresh potting soil. I typically do not try, I try not to disturb the root ball that much. Um, one year I did absolutely like tear up the root ball because I had let the plant get way too root bound. So I really needed to loosen it up. And the plant did go into a little bit of shock after this. It did not put out any leaves for a couple months. 
Um, but it has rebounded nicely. And now I just try to be more mindful of how often I repot it, knowing how quickly it is growing. When I do repot it, um, in addition to using the fresh soil, I only size the pot up like one to two inches because you don't want too much extra soil in your pot. The bigger the pot, it doesn't make the plant grow any bigger. You don't want those roots to be drowning in a lot of soil. So only size up like an inch or two on your pot. In terms of routine maintenance for this plant, when I'm watering it, I and if it's the spring, summer, early fall, or even an unseasonably warm day, even if it's like in the 50s out um, during the day, I will drag this plant outside and I will water it with the hose. And the reason I do that is because I take the opportunity to wash off all of the foliage on the plant, tops and bottoms, the stems, the moss pole, everything. This is a really good way to keep the leaves clean, keep the plant growing in its most ideal conditions. Um, and to, it's a really good, helpful habit with routine pest prevention. Um, I have had some pest issues with this plant, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, but rinsing the plant off is just a no brainer. It helps it look, look its best and grow its best. If you can't take your plant outside to do that, a good alternative is to either drag it into a shower, which I've also done. It's a little bit messier and a little bit more of a pain, but I do do that sometimes. Um, or to take a damp microfiber cloth, which just a teeny tiny bit of something like neem oil or a mild um, soap without a degreaser in it, just very mild, heavily diluted, and wipe down the leaves, top and bottom, just to get rid of any watermarks, um, dust, all that sort of stuff. So this plant is vulnerable to a variety of your run-of-the-mill houseplant pests. The only plant pest I've had on this one is sadly one of the most difficult to get rid of. Um, I did have thrips on this plant several years ago. So as you can see now, it's happy, healthy, spitting out beautiful growth. No sign of the thrips in the last few years. Um, it was a huge, dramatic, chaotic experience for me having to isolate a large plant and treat it and treat everything that was around it for several months, uh, a couple of years ago to make sure everything was gone. Um, I have also have a post about getting rid of thrips on my blog. I know it's not necessarily the most popular opinion, but I did end up using uh, bonite systemic granules in the soil and um, then Captain Jack's dead bug root on the leaves, tops and bottoms, thoroughly, weekly, the spray was weekly, uh, for several weeks until I could ensure that I had knocked out the entire life cycle of the thrips that were on the plant. And that did end up working. Um, that may not work for you. There are a number of different ways to attack pests like that, but uh, that's just what worked for me. So this is a really fun and easy plant to propagate as well. I have propagated so many Monstera Deliciosas. I don't even remember how many at this point. My mom has two plants that I propagated from mine. Um, my brother and his girlfriend have some Monstera babies from me as well. And then I've also been known to get plants from the clearance section and harvest all the babies from them to save them and give them away or sell them for super cheap online. Just because I love this plant so much, I can't stand watching them die ever. Um, so the easiest way to do this is to either divide an existing plant. So a lot of times if you go to a big box garden store, they will have multiple plants in each pot. So if you look at the close up on my plant here, I have three stems and three growth points on my plant. So if I wanted to, I could take this plant out of the pot and I could separate this into three different plants and pot them up separately without doing any sort of rooting or special consideration or anything like that. Um, of course, I don't want to do that, but if you wanted to go and get a plant and separate them, it's super easy to do that. You just take it out of the soil and you gently remove the soil from the roots, find out where the plant is separated into different parts under the soil line, and then just pot those up separately. Another option is to take a cutting from a plant. You want to make sure this has a growth point on it. So those are either the little nubs on the side of the stems, or you can take a cutting and remove the bottom of a set of leaves. Um, to expose some growth points. There are a number of different ways you can propagate plants. I find that Monstera deliciosa propagates very well in water and it also transitions very well to soil. That's not the case for all plants that I like to propagate, but why complicate it if you don't have to? And I think water propagation looks really pretty too. So if it works for a plant, that's usually my go-to. So when you take a cutting, you put it in the water, keep it in the water for a number of weeks, refreshing the water weekly until the roots are a couple inches long, and then you can pot it up in soil. 
Now that I think about it, I'll probably do a separate video on that too, just showing all of the different steps in the process. Oh, and one more thing. I used to moderate a very large houseplant group. And one of the most common questions that I would see people posting about were, what are these weird things growing out of the side of my Monstera plant? So you can see them here in my plant. These are just aerial roots. Um, these are what the plant uses to climb up other things in nature, trees, stumps, wood, branches, whatever. Um, they're helpful if you are using a moss pole because they can get down into the moss pole and attach to it. Um, some people, people do a variety of things with these. Some people cut them off. Um, some people let them grow out of the pot and kind of bunch them up, which I think looks really cool. Me, I just stick them right down into the soil and let them do their thing whenever they sprout. Um, don't worry, there's nothing wrong with your plant. You can pretty much just let them do their thing and your plant will be fine. It's just an aerial root. All right, so that is an overview of my Monstera Deliciosa care guide. I hope you guys found it helpful. This is one of my absolute favorite plants. Even though it's super common, it remains one of my biggest showstoppers. People always remark on this when they come to my house just because it's so big and showy. And it's the perfect combination of big and showy, but also not a whole lot of maintenance and uh, a lot of work. So it's a great beginner plant as well. And it makes a great addition to any houseplant collector's collection. So if you have any questions, drop them below and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you see my new plant care videos. And in the meantime, I also have posts on my blog, which I'll link below for a full Monstera Deliciosa care guide and a full propagation guide that outlines all the different propagation steps with a bunch of pictures that I'll hopefully eventually be turning into a video on here as well. So until then, happy planting.